Greetings to you all in the precious name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Our today's meditation is on Exodus chapter 8. As we go through this chapter, may the Lord speak to each one of us. This chapter can be divided into three sections. Verse 1 to 15, the second plague, frogs. Verse 16 to 19, the third plague, gnats. Verse 20 to 32, the fourth plague, flies. Exodus chapter 8 tells of more judgments that God sent on Pharaoh and the land of Egypt. In the previous chapter, he showed Pharaoh his power by turning a rod into serpent and by turning the water throughout the land into blood. But Pharaoh still did not relent. In the next section, we see God sends frogs. The first judgment mentioned in Exodus chapter 8 is the infestation of frogs everywhere throughout the Egypt. After some time, Pharaoh seemed willing to relent. He called Moses and Aaron to ask God to remove the frogs in exchange for letting the Israel offer their sacrifice to the Lord. Moses told Pharaoh that the only frogs that would remain the next day would be in the river. The other frogs died, as Moses had said, and the land stank with a heap of the dead frogs everywhere. However, once Pharaoh saw that Moses had rid the area of frogs, he changed his mind. As a result, the Lord sent another judgment. In the next judgment, God turned all the dust in the land of Egypt into gnats. Pharaoh's magicians could not replicate this and they told Pharaoh that this could have only be done by God. Moses then went to Pharaoh once more to ask him to let the people of Israel go. Pharaoh still did not relent. Next, God sends a swarm of flies on the people of Egypt. Moses again went to Pharaoh to see if he could allow the people of Israel to leave. If he did, Moses said all the flies would be removed from the land of Egypt. Pharaoh agreed to let them go, but once again, once the flies were removed, and the Pharaoh changed his mind and kept Israel's captive. Some of the points listed here. In verse 2, we see the keyword smit. The verb used also meant to plague or to strike and a pestilence were employed to impress them with the severity of what was happening in Egypt. Also, we see the word frogs. The Egyptians' favorite frogs were seen in wearing of ornament in the shape of frog and in the prohibition against intentionally killing frogs. The god Happy was regarded with great respect was the representation of in the image of this frog, the goddess Heat. In verse 8, we see the Pharaoh asked to entreat the Lord. The Hebrew word used is Atar. This Hebrew word translated entreat or intercede is one of the biblical words for prayer. The word depicts a person earnestly beseeching God and basically means to ask. In verse 19, we see the word, this is the finger of God. The failure of the magicians to duplicate this plague draw out from them this amazing evaluation, not only among themselves, but publicly before Pharaoh, who nevertheless remained disobedient, unwilling to acknowledge the power of God. In verse 21, we see the word swarms. The Greek translation swarms as a dog leaf fly, a blood-sucking insect. The larva fly which deposited its eggs on the other living things so the larva could feast upon it and was considered the manifestation of God, their Egyptian god, Utachit. In verse 24, we see the land was corrupted because of these swarms is hardly an evaluation giving for any insect of their god. In verse 22, we see the verse set apart the land of Goshen. For the first time in connection with the plagues, God specifically noted the discrimination to be made, Israel would be untouched. The term sign describes a distinction which was being drawn and which was also specifically noted for the 5th, 7th, 9th and 10th plagues. Coupled with the repeated emphasis on my people in God's pronouncements, the specific distinction between Israel and Goshen and Egypt itself highlighted both God's personal and powerful oversight of his people. This chart shows the sign, wonders, warning, timing, instruction and distinction made for Israel whether it is implicit or explicit. If you see in verse 4 flies, the distinction made for Israel is explicit. That means it is untouched to the people of Israel. Some of the notes of the plagues are listed below. The plague of frogs mocked their goddess who supposedly helped women to give birth. In third plague, gnats rose from the dust which ridiculed the god of death and the underworld, whose death and rebirth were celebrated each year. And the flies of the fourth plague emphasize that just as God has power over the water and air, he also rules the air, which showed God's power over the sky god Horus. Ecological Disaster, Faith and Environment The infestation of frogs and other nine plagues God sent on Egypt 
created an ecological nightmare. The disruption of the region's natural balance impacted water resource, air quality, plants and animals and many other environmental systems. Yet the responsibility for this disaster fell on Pharaoh but not on God. His refusal to obey God or even to treat his Hebrew labors with compassion invited these judgments. Each plague offered an opportunity for Pharaoh to yield, but it was only after God allowed the natural systems of Egypt to fail that Pharaoh finally relented. The Creator knew exactly how to upset the delicate balance of Egyptian ecosystem to bring proud Pharaoh to his knees. The plagues were undeniable demonstration of his power, and his bearing of the Israel showed that God has supreme control over natural force. As God is speaking through his word, let's humble ourselves and obey the Lord and his word. May the Lord bless this short meditation and edification of our spiritual lives. Amen.